Okay, let's talk about one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite time uh, X Men characters. But a gentleman by the name of Forge. Forge, um, let me just move this around so I can show you what we're looking at. This is, oops, wrong one, wrong one, wrong one. Ah, that's it. This is Forge um, here, and his um, his run with um, Cl uh, Chris Claremont was is as I'm as far as I'm concerned one of the greatest uh, X Men runs of all time. If you want to read a, an amazing series of the best, the best of the best of the best, uh, John Burns art. And Chris Claremont um, writing. So you've got these amazing, um, if I remember right, these are Jim Lee artworks. Uh, can't see his signature, but he's he's done a few. So you've got um, Jim Lee artwork, and of course Forge here with um, Chris Claremont uh, writing it. This is the Uncanny X Men series before they uh, went. Divided in the 90s into X-Men and then also um, I think it was either X-Men Alpha or X-Men Whichever one and there was an X-Men Uncanny X-Men which are uh, They're running this normal series and then there was a new one with X-Men um, just called X-Men if I remember right or X-Men Blue um, And so Chris Claremont was just I regard him as one of the best X-Men writers ever that you can ever think of. He, the characters uh, just popped out at you. The stories, the well-rounded development of the of each character's background and who they are and what they were about. And Forge was one that really stuck out with me early on because he was a science guy, but um, he was also the uh, a guy who was uh, disabled, who had a bionic arm. That he had built for himself, if I remember right, and uh, and his, you know, he was a Native American. He was Cheyenne, uh, Indigenous American, whichever word you want to use, and he was just one of those ones that stuck out. I didn't know much about um, Native American culture apart from I think I watched a movie. Um, uh, I, I can't remember what it's called, but it's tip of my head. Back in, um, I think it might have been Charlton Heston that was in it um, back in the eighties mid 80s and or late 80s and so when I moved to Auckland I found myself uh, you know seeing this X-Men comics and later on uh, as I discussed yesterday that we were checking out Heroes um, not Heroes Mark 1 comics in um, in Queen Street and I had a, uh, you know I had money I was working uh, as a teenager I was 17 18 19 years old uh, for three years and I just got Total, while I was still reading 2080, um, the British comic series with Judge Dredd, I started reading, uh, I got introduced to that, uh, to X-Men comics, because I saw there, I wasn't so much interested in any superhero type things at all, and so um, the X-Men series really popped out with me, and of course, you know, Deadpool and all that, but that came later with, um, with being able to get um, buyback back issues and in those days you know comic shops were the place to be to be introduced to you know comic books in a bigger way because you had a guy behind the counter who could tell you what those stories were and if you were like going hey man i'm, I'm thinking you know i need I'm looking at something different what do you suggest what's the best thing that's out there and i guess the guy behind the counter said hey have you have, do you know about the x-man and it was the best time to be introduced to the x-man and um, late 80s, 88, 89, you know, really, it was, like I said, it's the best time to be uh, introduced to a comic book series written by probably the best people and the artwork by the best people. And like I said, Jim Lee covers were amazing. Of course, they still are. But back then, you know, he, they were trying anything. Uh, and you could, you know, it was really tough um, going into the 90s with the superhero, um, you know, uh, with... Um, Jim Lee and um, Todd McFarlane, Eric Larson, and can't remember the third person. 
or the fourth person that set up Image Comics later on in the 90s. So, uh, the, you know, uh, for me, Forge, like, let me tell you about what who Forge was. So Forge, you know, he appeared in 184. Uh, with, um, he was created by writer Chris Claremont and artist John Romita Jr. Uh, first fish appeared in August 1984. Uh, 184. Uh, what a way! What you know? What a way to remember when he was created. 84 and 184, right? Uh, he. This is the best part about what I like about Forge, is this relationship. Is this amazing relationship between uh, Storm and Forge? This this romantic, interesting well-rounded development uh between forge and storm his first love if i remember right or her first love uh i know in the move uh, in like current day situations with um x-men and all that she's with black panther because hey black people got to stick together right and that's how people write tend to see things but back then forge had an amazing beautiful relationship with um with storm and if you want to read a really good romantic x-men story apart from Jean gray and uh, cyclops um scott you can basically this was a second story that was going through the books there and like i said chris claremont you know people people kind of go uh, like i was just check something on um, i was just on um on twitter and someone was saying how he was really wordy with with his writing but you know what they were the best stories ever. They were the best stories for two year run that he did. I didn't even know about these writers. I didn't know about these artworks. I didn't really concern myself with who and what and where. But all I was there that these books were amazing. The artwork, the the characters, the stories were blew me away, right? Because I was used to so many um, English, um, you know, the Judge Dread Universe, the Mega City One. Uh, Mega City 2, Titan, and all these different, uh, you know, Cursed Earth, all those different stories. And suddenly I'm introduced to X Men. And I was blown away. And it was just this, the idea of these people having actual real faults, real human characteristics. Um, their powers, of course, because of mutant, uh, mutant gene. But, you know, they weren't doing it as part of some sort of superheroism type thing you know they weren't clothed in that they were just clothed in being natural human characters um uh, just going about trying to help people that didn't like them and um the, the the amazing thing is um i think it's in um 262 um where he talks about his past as a vietnam vet and um issues there so one thing uh, i was really excited was like i saw these now i have to backtrack here around about uh to late 1990s i lost my pro about 200 my entire x-men collection and new mutant collection and a whole bunch of things to a fire of my own fault and so for five odd years i didn't get into i just left comics alone i just didn't touch comics. And so I lost all my amazing uh, X-Men and, um, to the, um, you know, X-Men 2000 AD and all that collection and was gone. And New Mutants were gone. My uh, my Nightbreed comics, my Hell um, Hellraiser comics were all gone. All the things that I loved. And even, you know, stuff like Night Thrasher. Um, and, and like I said, I didn't get into the, like the superhero type things. Spider-Man wasn't my thing. And so X-Men, you know, has always been my love when it comes to Marvel Comics. Um, and so, a bit more about um, Forge. So he shared a romantic relationship with Storm and a brief affair with Mystique, which led him to associate with the X-Men and thus enhancing the technology, as I mentioned yesterday, of the X-Mansion. Um, so he was, also, he was also a member of X-Factor, which got me to read into X-Factor and buy those comics. Now, um, we get down the deck here. So early years, Forge is a mutant with an innate superhuman talent for invention and intuitive genius. He's a Native American of the Cheyenne Nation, 
although he was trained as a medicine man. So it's very well grounded characteristics of who he is. He has primarily relied upon technology rather than mysticism to accomplish his tasks. The rift between Forge and his elder teacher, Nays, made Forge leave his past behind and join the military. As I mentioned, he was in the um, he was a Vietnam War. Uh, while in the army, Forge served in the Vietnam War after rising in the ranks to become a sergeant. He was asked by S.H.I.E.L.D. to join. Now, one thing I have an uh, issue with Marvel comic is that they have just let this character just left it to his side. See, they could have brought him into, the, into S.H.I.E.L.D., into the TV series. They could have brought him into the movies. Uh, so many movies they put out uh, into so many different uh, areas. Uh, um, I can't remember if he was in the uh, animated series, um, but he's been in so many different books. So why not make him into a better character if you're going to go on with a, you know, today when you're introducing um, the new warriors with a Native American character. Of course, you've got, I think the Starfire, I think, is it Sunfire or Sunspot that they put into uh, stuff? some you know one of the characters that they brought in um, as a new character why not build up forge into a better uh you know bring him back not make him better but give him more popularity make him um more a central character because he's one of the original um uh, characters of um the x-men universe um and so it's and of course why not mention the fact that he's the he's a guy who built the x-men mansion the technology behind it Right. Um, right. So, Forge, um, so he was asked to join Shield. Forge declined because he saw his need was in Vietnam War. During his second tour of duty in the war, his comrades were killed by enemy troops. In anger, he used their spirits to summon a band of demons and destroy the opposition. Forge, concerned about his former comrades, decided to order a B 52 bombing on his position to close the portal from the world of the unliving. Oh, undead uh, um, and so the bombs destroy the spirits but he is injured as well losing his right leg and right arm uh, right hand so this was a, he so he goes on to uh, this action allowed the demon called adversary to come to earth and forge has since been hesitant to employ his mystical abilities years later for, uh, forge creates cybernetic replacements for his lost limbs as I've mentioned when, uh, when Tony Stark stops making advanced weaponry for use as government, Forge is hired as an employee of the Disperse Department. So you could have put him, you could have mentioned him in Iron Man, right? And, and Avengers, why not? One of his earliest com um, commissions to, is to design a weapon to detect a shape-shifting enemies known as a dire race. Subsequently, Forge constructs a device capable of neutralizing mutant powers. Bring him into, you know, bring him into um, New Mutants, right? Uh, following orders from the president, Henry uh, Peter Gurich, Gurich an, an agent of the National um, Security Council, takes the advice, uh, device, takes a device. Forge protests against the device, uh, uh, protests because the device is untested and extremely dangerous to use. The device is used against Rogue, who was wanted for allegedly killing a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. However, the device instead removes the powers of her teammates. So, of her teammate Storm. Now, this is where the um, interaction between Storm and Forge come in. So, Storm, um, Forge rescues Storm after she falls into a river, having lost her powers. He brings her to his home in Dallas, Texas. During his, her recovery, romantic feelings develop between the two. When she finds out he developed the device which removed her abilities, Storm leaves. They are briefly reunited to fight the common enemy of the dire race who are trying to prevent Forge from perfecting the neutralizer. They are defeated by the combined um, for, uh, forces of the X-Men, Magic, and Amanda Sefton. Forge later improves his neutralizer, but is hesitant to device more, um, design more devices like it because of what happened with Storm. With the help of the race enemy, Rom the Space Knight, excuse me, Forge creates a large-scale version of the neutralizer in Earth's orbit. Romans Forge use the device on the race home world, casting the entire race into uh, into the other dimension. Excuse me. After saving the world, right? So you got you got Forge actually saves the world. 
Forge destroys all remaining remaining neutralizers and focuses on ridding the world, uh, ridding the earth of the adversary. The adversary, under the shape of Nays, convinces Nays being his uh, former tutor, uh, convinces Storm that uh, Forge was driven insane by her leaving and is planning to open a gate to hell. Storm tries to kill Forge, but the moment she stabs him, she sees that he she was tricked. The adversary banishes Storm and Forge to another dimension devoid of human life. Storm and Forge spend an unknown amount of time there rekindling their uh, their romance uh, relationship uh, forge is able to restore storm's abilities and use them to power gate back to earth so you can see there's an entire um entire um storyline that is so amazing about form a uh, forge and storms um uh, i guess you could call it form you know friend Brad and Angela Jody, right? That sort of thing. So uh, Forge and Storm, you know, their key relationship as a story arc is such a great relationship created by um, Storm. I'm uh, sorry, by um, Chris Claremont and the artwork by um, by John um, John Byrne. And like I said, you know, this this is just it's amazing series to read you know if you want anything to read to get you into um you know if you're thinking about um what to read and you want to introduce uh, you know you want to you want to think about x if you've been watching the x and movies and stuff this the storyline with chris claremont and john byrne as artist and as well as the art um, cover art by jim lee and it's probably the best work he's ever done of course he's done a really good job at when he went over to dc um after leaving image but it's just the best of the best that you can ever read when it comes to x-men comics i i i cannot highly re recommend it enough uh last year i was able to pick up a handful of them from retcon up in auckland uh when darren um, did, um ran his um convention there and uh, you know uh with with hope you know being able to pick them up for just a couple bucks each was just amazing. I wish I had more money, could buy as many as I could of that, because they were what set me up to get into Marvel. I wasn't interested in DC, and I wasn't interested in Marvel in the late 80s. Even in the 80s, wasn't my thing. But the X-Men books by these two um, creators really got me into them. Uh, and that expanded me into the X-Spectre, got me into New Mutants, got me reading, uh, you know, uh, Cable got me reading Bishop and all that. And if it wasn't for Chris Claremont's amazing writing on the X Men, we wouldn't have that amazing, beautiful universe set up. Uh, of course, there, then they, they um, if I remember right, there came the Phoenix Saga, which recent movie with the Dark Phoenix, X Men Dark Phoenix. But that, of course, was cut cut very short. That should have been a trilogy movie on its own. Of course, uh, Fox got sold to Disney. And we don't know what's going to happen with that. And I guess that's why they couldn't expand on that universe, sadly. Uh, but, you know, my, my whole thing, my whole thing was that, um, uh, that when, when they started making the X-Men movies again and Dark Phoenix, I was like, well, what about Forge? You know, you guys are so up to date with the, the cultural bubble that we live in right now with everybody talking about identity politics and all that and virtue signaling this and that why not bring back forge why don't you you introduce forge into the x-men universe hard uh, why have him in the background why not put him in the you know bring him back into a relationship with um hey you know uh we me and storm we were you know going out before let's rekindle our love and do that again and even in a greater way and i don't understand this whole idea of creating new creators new creators new creators when you've got um, uh, creations when you've got great uh, characters and you can create a great storyline that's already exists and build upon that um, but instead they um, they give you this uh, pudgy looking um, no nonsense character with a backpack right that that doesn't even make sense but here you've got and and, and if I can't remember the name of the character and the new um, new worries that they've created silly as it is it's just not even worth remembering uh but and but that you have a shaman a trained forge who's a trained shaman who's got a um, you know who built his own arm and legs after being bombed 
which you know he caught up on the b-52 bomb himself so he could save his comrades you know and then loses his right leg and right arm but he builds his own because you know he decides to put aside mysticism and go on to create the x mansion right all the technology there and you have got this this focal this cornerstone of the x man uh written really well developed really well uh that there isn't He's got his weaknesses. He's got his strength. He's got his love interests. He's got his broken heart. He's got his uh, dysfunctional relationships. He's got his uh, storm kill, wanting to kill, being deceived into trying to kill him, you know, and being um, being thrown to another dimension on a world alone with another person. All this amazing story. You could just you could just make a movie just about Storm and Forge, just on that little story arc. But of course. You gotta, you gotta complicate all these things and go. Well, it's all oh, those stories. They don't have enough in them, or whatever. They don't translate well to um, movies and stuff. You know, it's it's just bollocks, right? It's just it's just uh, pointless uh, arguments that doesn't mean made. The other thing is that, um, and those arguments don't even matter because all you gotta do is pick up the books and go, wow you know read them and i and i always recommend that series it doesn't matter whatever comics coming out now read john Byrne and um chris claremont's work on it there's no other you know on the x-men there's nothing anytime anywhere in that actually surpasses that when it comes to the x-men alone now um going forth you know that there's so much more I can talk about that, but he's one of my favorite characters. Uh, now, uh, 